In this video, I'm going to try and show you the row and column actuators and how they work to control individual pins of each cell. I'll just flip this device over so that you can see uh, the underside, which is actually nothing at all. It's just a cavity in the block uh, machined here so that uh, some of the controllers and the other stuff that I have in mind will go into that empty space over there but I'm going to go back slowly turn it around all the pins are set just put these two little supports underneath to position the device so that you can see it uh, the, these are the column controllers the column slides over here that I'm using just that little movement that's open and that's closed open closed yeah, I'm, I'm open closed so what I've done is for the first five cells that's two slides per cell two four six eight ten I've closed them so basically all the pins are latched there shouldn't be any change in the position of the, of the pins over here for the first five cells uh, after that from the sixth onwards you should see all the uh, cells are unlatched so that you you should be able to see this from si cell six onwards the pins jumping up these are over here are the the row actuators those uh, column actuators come under the pins this way so the row actuators if you look i'm going to press one with my the first one for the top most row over here with my thumb and you'll find that there's no act act actuation over here for the first five cells but if you can look carefully I'll try and zoom in for cell 6 onwards cell 6 is starts here I think that's cell 6 I'm zooming in slowly okay that's cell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 onwards so six, can you see the pins coming up? Six, seven has got pins up there and right through the whole line. I'll try and show you the line. All the cells are up for the line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out again and show you a little more of how these row actuators work. So you've seen that for the only the pins in the columns that are actuated have actually jumped up and now when I deactivate deact that particular if you can see there's just a little bit of about a millimeter of movement over here on the actuator so from the other end I'm going to release those pins you should be able to see the rest of the pins falling the first five cells have no there's, there's absolutely no movement up or down they're latched latched shut down so can you see them they're just up going up down I'll do it for the second second row. Second row, first five cells, nothing, and you can see the rest of the pins up there. And just drop them again. You can see them all dropping up. Now for the third row, up. So what I've done is I've locked the first five cells are latched, so there's no effect at all with uh, any of the cells over there. So no matter what you do with the row actuators, nothing happens. Only for the cells that uh, the latches are open, they jump up. So I've got all the pins up for the cell 6 onwards, 6 to 20, all up. 1 to 5, nothing, no activity. So that's basically how a row and column actuator work. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm actually going to show you how I can, suppose you want, you've got to set the data up one column at a time. So if I want uh, just pin one over here to come up and uh, all the rest uh, remain down what I do is uh, I enable pin at the column one so that would basically be I'm just resetting the row enable column one that is I open it you can see there's a little bit of a gap over here just that now it's closed open or latched open so now the first one is open I set set it by row and column. So row one, column one, 
row column one uh, enabled set with row then I latch it in position lock again and after I release the row actuator only column one dot one that is a in this case is enabled I can do the same uh, I've got to do an entire column at a time so if I had to set for the for the when I'm using the display I would set all the information in this first column simultaneously so now suppose I, I want to set A in cell 4 over here what I do is I, I enable cell 4 first column of cell 4 let's just push it there a little bit of a millimeter there and uh, actuate row 1 notice that since uh, uh, column 1 is latched the it retains its A position and uh, now only column 4 A has come up that's because column 4 the column as well as the row are enabled so I can latch column 4 pin A in that position latch it shut so even when I release the row actuator it's it's there I'll try and zoom in so that you can see you've got A in pin 1 and pin uh, in cell 1 and cell 4 over there the rest of the pins are dropped if you okay you can see them pin 1 and 4 I'll try and go at an angle so that you can see them okay I think you can see them there pin 1 and pin 4 Okay, that's pin 1 and pin 4. That's how you're using row and column to actuate pin by pin, cell by cell. So, the, the, the one characteristic is once a pin is latched in a particular position, the latching is very strong, very firm. You can press as hard as you like over here. You can take any amount of finger pressure, nothing happens. And as I showed in the other video, you can actually use this as a braille embosser. Put a piece of paper over the top and run rub it like, rub your finger over it or rubber rubber wiper and you get your braille impression on the piece of paper so that's basically how these row and column actuators work suppose I wanted a, I don't know braille so the first dot and the second dot on this uh, cell one I would uh, enable one column at a time so just enable one column for uh, the first column first I'd set pin 1, dot 1 is set, I'd lock it in position, prepare for the next enabling, now the column 2, dot 1, enabled, set it, latch it, release. So now I've got 1 and 2 there. So basically you can go down, a uh, computer would use, uh, control would, uh, you'd in, uh, refresh one column at a time from one end to the other, therefore refreshing the whole page. Suppose I had to do it for cell 3 over here. I want A in cell 3. Uh, cell 1 and cell 3 would need to be set sim simultaneously. So I'd enable column 1. I set row 1 and row, row 1 of cell 3 simultaneously. Latch again and release. Now we've got pin 1 in cell 1 and pin 1 in cell 3 set so that's basically how you would do it if you want to see it uh, pin 1 and 3 there and in the cells that are I've got another cell latched over there I, I, I haven't disabled that I just disabled that just somewhere down the line from a previous operation so I'll just disable those things so that uh, I'll show you one and three so one and three should be latched there's one and that is three and that's one I think I had latched uh, two uh, A had the two top so I can I can reset that so I got one and three and uh, suppose i want to actuate all the rows at a time i'm just just enabling a couple of rows 
so that I can set a whole bunch. I can show you a bunch going up. Can you see them jumping? That's how they would jump. There's one fellow who's stuck over there. I don't know what he, why he's stuck. But uh, okay, that's. I think they just got. He may not be the right height. So watch all the cells jumping now when when all the columns are the latches are open some pins are a little small because uh, they were spark eroded to the correct height uh, and that's the way it's been done <laughs>